So I don't always know where poems come from, but I was in the movie theater watching the March of the Penguins, and I had this flashback um, that I hadn't never thought of, actually. And it was when the mother had come back from the long swim and was feeding the tiny baby penguin for the first time. And I remembered that my mom had done that once. I know that sounds crazy. This is called Penguin Mullet Bread. She pulls white oily meat of mullet off the long sharp bones of spine. The bones prick. She never once says ouch, kissing the tips now and then. I watch her long fingers. It is summer. Behind her, the white curtains she has made move like seagrass, tall, freckled, waving just beyond. I am camera. She is movie. She bites, then rolls, placing plump, soft chunks of fish into the side of her mouth. Her eyes grow big from what she tastes. I study her mouth, not her eyes. She chews slowly, never showing what's there. Her tongue twists and falls. My dinner moves in slow white fish animation. She coos like a woman who can taste any flavor in the world, a woman who can hula hoop in her own mouth. I want to say, Mama, pull the flesh from the throat, not the belly. The meat there has more juice than the meat around the fins, but she is the Mama. I have no baby patois for what little I know of watery things. I have only 17 months of new desire. I miss my private swimming hole that by the size six looks of her has all but dried up. She chews down on the flesh of the fish, packs it around good until it is a perfect caramel mush. Catching some of the juice that falls with her longest finger there at the corner of her mouth, she pushes all of the sweet flesh back inside once or twice. She pulls out a hat pin sized bone hiding in the waves of tender meat. Eureka! Holding it up in the air to show my wishful eyes rise. My newish eyes lift over and beyond the white curtains that all visitors believe are store bought. This is why you have a mama, her empire backbone speaks. Why you must never talk back to me. Why you must love, honor, and obey me. My job, her toes pas de deux, is to feed and tell you the stories and keep you away from sharp things that might slip into your throat and never completely disappear. Her eyes plie into the slinky circles of her mouth. She reaches her long brown fingers deep inside her jaw. Our hinged mouths open, mine prematurely. My fists are flying fleshy verbs in the apple air of her kitchen, bald in sweet anticipation. My begging eyes and dark mauve lips close in slow around her fingers, the pounded, succulent, fish and spit lands on the center of my tongue. I swell in my first chair ever, fed by the mother who relishes the story of turning her back and leaving me once. To swim off a thousand miles and find food, fight off shimmering shark, then swim a thousand miles back to me, just to drop her beak into mine. I I'm the lucky girl of the high chair. I love this memory.